Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Bombing the Reich, that is Gary Grigsby's Eagle Day to Bombing the Reich. This is a Grognard war game, uh, unlike really anything else, uh, which looks at the combined bomber offensive in Europe uh, from 1943 at the start of, um, not really the start of Point and Blank, it's actually a, the, the first date of the campaign is August 17th, so the first Schreinfurt raid. Um, and the game goes through the conclusion of the war, putting you in charge basically of the combined bomber offensive in both the Mediterranean and Northern Europe. You have to plan raids, you have to plan sweeps, plan recon missions. It is, you know, you're like you're like Crosby, kind of, sort of, but not really. You're like if Crosby in Masters of the Air was not just planning the raids' routes, but also planning the raids themselves. You know, what are we going to bomb on what day with what groups? But you're not just doing that. You're also, for the for the 100th bomb group, you're also doing that for every single unit, a fighter squadron or above. So either bomb groups or fighter squadrons or fighter groups. It is, and it's one day turns. So each day you plan new missions. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we are on September 1st of 1943. We've been going for about two weeks now. Uh, it, it, we do have some mandates from high command today. So the Mediterranean stays the same, the 12th air force, which is the American air force in the Mediterranean and the British Mediterranean air command are both tasked with avalanche objectives, which basically means softening Italy up for the landings there, which will be occurring in a couple of days. And the 8th Air Force has received its first mandate from high command today uh, to bomb U-boat pens. So, that's not great. Um, U-boat pen bombing sucks. You can usually uh, sort of preempt that by bombing U-boat factories. Uh, but U -boat bo bo bombing U-boat pens sucks because you don't get any points. The way this game basically scores is it takes a look at industry damage. It takes a look at terror damage, which is a effectively firebombing of cities by the British at night. And it takes a look at air superiority. And those three values are all sort of wrapped up into the total number of points that you get toward a victory. Now, right now, we have 922 strategic bombing points. That's because the Americans were doing very little damage in Europe before the game started on the 17th of August. We do have 95,000 terror points, which seems like a pretty good amount. Um, the game starts you at around 87, 88,000 because the British have already been bombing Germany for quite some time by the time the game starts. But we have made some notable inroads here. Um, you can see if we take a look and we zoom in, and, and I know this isn't, again, not the prettiest game, but if you go into the Ru the Ruhr here, the Ruhr Valley, since the game started, we have basically obliterated Essen. Uh, this is, you know, it's got 88 urban damage. You can see all these little black squares represent one square mile of completely destroyed urban terrain. Yellow represents damage. Black hollowed out squares represents total destruction, and occasionally you'll see a little red square here which indicates that there's a currently f a fire occurring in that one mile radius. So you can see Essen is largely destroyed. I didn't actually bomb Essen last night. Last night we bombed Wilhelmshaven, which we did quite a bit of damage. There was almost no damage to Wilhelmshaven before the last turn, and we bombed Wilhelmshaven last night with about 200 British bombers. We didn't lose a single British bomber. I don't know what I did special. I sent a few jamming aircraft in other directions and a few jamming aircraft with the raid, but we didn't lose a single bomber last night, so that was a nice raid on Wilhelmshaven. Uh, we also previously bombed Emden. Emden is pretty much totally destroyed. Uh, it's a small city, so that didn't take as much. Uh, but yeah, Emden is eliminated. Bremen is not in great shape either. 62% of that city's been destroyed. And Hamburg has huge swaths of it burned out from the firebombing in Operation Gamora. But that all occurred before the game actually took place. So most of this damage, nothing to do with me. Most of this damage occurred before the game started. What we're going to do tonight, though... Um, we're going to bomb Berlin, but I haven't planned all the raids out. Usually I plan the raids before we actually, uh, you know, get going. So that way you don't have to watch me click through a kind of clunky interface. Um, but yeah, you and, and Union, yes, you can evaluate targets. So for example, if we want to go to list targets, we can go here. Avalanche targets are the targets I'm required to hit for the invasion of Italy. So you can see if I click that, it only highlights the avalanche related targets. All the factories are actually hidden. You may not notice it, but all you've got here, these are ground units, air bases, radars, 
and sort of rail depots, if you will. Um, so you can see the different types of units there. Uh, in addition, if we go back to the types list, there's overlord objectives, which we're not quite there yet. You can see a percentage of that particular type of target that is currently damaged. Um, and then you can see the different priorities. So red priorities like the U-boat pens here, you will occasionally be required by high command to hit. The, I believe the yellow targets, I think, are the second highest priority behind the, the red ones. And then the blue, the green ones are third highest, I think. I don't think, yeah, oil's definitely higher. So yellow is second second highest priority. Red, red are mandates, then come yellow, then come green, and then everything else that you don't really get points for is either white or gray. Area targets being city targets where you can get terror damage and also port targets usually take place in cities and can score terror damage as well. Um, so area targets also have rail depots. They do not score you industrial damage, but the one thing is with area targets, they can be large enough that factories exist within them. And if you bomb a factory inside an area target, you can get both terror and industrial damage. So that's also something you can do. Now, with that being said here, Avalanche is what we're being ordered to hit in Italy. So before we kind of plan our Berlin raid, I'll just give you a quick show of what we're doing in Italy. A lot of different paths of aircraft taking. Most of this are recon, but we are launching several very large raids in Italy. We've got over 200 fighters hitting the Palazza airfield in a sweep with bombs. We've got over 200 fighters hitting Vibo Valentia. Uh, it also has 27 fighters. We have a large sweep going in on Kronton airfield. We have B-17s hitting, uh, I believe, the Hermann Goering division here in southwestern Italy. We've got some lighter bombers hitting the 26th Panzer Troop here. And then at the absolute tip, we've got another force hitting the 29th Panzer Grenadier Troop. So if we actually go and look at the raids, filter by bomber size. Some of the stuff is in, in uh, northern Europe. But um, you can see here 148 n bombers are also hitting Naples at night. Those are British bombers hitting Naples at night. Um, I guess you could, I mean, they'll give us terror points. But really the goal is the, the rail yard, which influences how quickly units move around after the actual landings occur. Um, we also have, you can see here, this is Sherberg, that's Dunkirk. Uh, we've got the 12th bomb group here is going after the 26th Panzer. These are uh, 124, are they B-25s? Yeah, B-25s uh, with some escorts there. Um, we also have 118 bombers going after the Hermann Goering Division. Those boys are B-17s with 86 P-38 Lightnings escorting. Um, and then we have 104 bombers. Oh, that's Amsterdam. We'll come to that later. We've got 88 bombers under the, I believe these guys are flying Bostons. Yep, 88 Boston 3s are hitting the 29th Panzer Grenadier Truppen. And is that pretty much it? we got the 17th Bomb Group hitting the rail yards at Batapilia, which is just southeast of Naples. It's already damaged, but it's not completely shut down. You can see we've shut down some of these other rail depots, but we haven't shut down all of them, obviously, in southern Italy. And that will influence how quickly these German units can move around after the landing. So ideally, you, you damage the depots. It influences the Germans' ability to reinforce these units. So when you destroy them, they don't get reinforcements very quick. But then also when the landing occurs, it slows their withdrawal to the defensive positions while they are the most vulnerable to attack. So that's sort of where we're at there. Uh, in Europe, I've got a different focus. So the 8th Air Force has mandates to go after U-boat pens. And our tactical air forces are going to go after ports. I haven't really hit the ports yet. It does influence the German economy if you do hit the ports. It doesn't directly lead to industrial damage, but it can if you destroy enough of them. Same with the rail yards. It, it influences transport and supply, which can slow the industry down. So we're going to go ahead and hit the Amsterdam port here. We're also going to hit uh, the port at Flushing, Dunkirk, um, and then I believe we've got a raid southwest of Le Havre at La Trate and Cherbourg. We're hitting all those ports with our bombers. We're still, you know, nine months out of D-Day, so I'm not too worried about I mean, it doesn't really matter in the game. Like, if I hit a port, it doesn't influence my friendly units once they arrive. I don't think. I could be wrong on that. Um, but so you can see that we are hitting those those particular types of ports, uh, those particular ports, that is. Uh, and so if we actually take a look here, it's 40 bombers going after Latrade. We've got 128 going after Cherbourg, 124 at Dunkirk, 180 at Flushing. 
and 104 at Amsterdam. Now, one of the other things that I'm factoring into my decision making tonight is that I have to hit the U-boat pens of the Germans. Doesn't matter where, but we have to hit U-boat pens. There are some U-boat pens at Hamburg, but that would be an incredibly costly mission, not having B-17 or not having P-51s yet. So we are going to go ahead and we're going to hit. Um, yeah, I think weren't there like fifty thousand French men, or there was there were thousands of French people were killed by Allied bombing raids in World War II. So unfortunate for the British or for the French and Dutch, but um, it was you know the, the bombing of Brest wasn't super great for the French civilians around there either, hitting the U-boat pens. Um, that being said. I'm not going to bother trying to hit Hamburg because I don't have fighters that can get me there, and I don't want to lose a ton of bombers for a mission that is basically worthless. Like, hitting these pens, I'm required to do. High Command says, you must hit these U-boat pens. I don't care about U-boat pens. I don't get any industrial damage for U-boat pens. I don't get any points at all. The only thing I do is get the brass off my back so I can hit other targets. So, sure, in the greater scheme of the war, maybe hitting U-boat pens helps material move across the Atlantic. As commander of the Allied bombers, you can shove it, High Command. I don't care about your little battle of the Atlantic. That being said, I am required to do so because that's what my, my commanders are ordering me to do. And that did happen historically. Historically, you know, the commander of the 8th Air Force... Really didn't want to bomb U-boat pens all that often, but he was required to for political reasons. Uh, likewise, uh, they wanted to, you know, not do as much of the preparation for D-Day as they did. They would have preferred to hit other targets, but again, you know, I believe there was some sort of famous quote where Eisenhower was basically like, these guys are basically being complete, you know, idiots, not realizing how all this fits into the into the wider war. Um, but that being said. We do have to bomb the U-boat pens, so I'm going to hit the safest pen. I'm going to hit Brest. It is the closest pen to England, and so in theory, I might be able to have some fighter cover. Although, I think most of my fighters are over here on the East Coast to support the primary raids. I didn't know this mandate was coming, so I didn't reposition any of them to Western England. So, we may not have much fighter cover. We'll see. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and set our initial point, which is where the bomb run starts. We're going to go ahead and set our exit point up here. Uh, outbound one over here. I'm trying to avoid some of the flak uh, that are located at these different targets. So most of these other targets have some anti-aircraft fire that they're going to put up. Um, so we're going to try and sort of divert east of that. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and pick our lead units. Now the 8th Air Force actually didn't fly yesterday, which maybe is why I'm getting ordered to launch this raid. I tried to give them the day off. And this is how High Command rewards me for giving them the day off. We're going to pick the unit with the the best experience rating here, which is the 379th Bomb Group at 75. The morale is 61. It's pretty good. We're not going to do a max effort either because why the hell would I do a max effort on a target I don't even want to hit? We do have some units that have fairly low morale. The 96th Bomb Group, the 95th Bomb Group, and the 305th Bomb Group are all below 50 morale, which is usually what I consider my cutoff for actually sending boys out to fight. Additionally, the fatigue is very low because most of these guys haven't dropped a bomb in two, two to three days. You can see their last mission two days ago, three days ago, two days ago. So we've been trying to rest them up because the 8th Air Force's bombers were pretty savaged through the course of the last few missions. Um, and so, you know, wh whatever. Um, we're also going to go ahead and send out only groups that are at full strength. We'll let the groups that are still replacing their losses and repairing their planes sit today out. Again, we're not going to do a max effort. We're going to send four, five bomb groups, the lead bomb group, and four others. That's going to be 147 bombers. That's a pretty good raid size at this time in the war, but it's certainly not the most I could send out, right? Um, all right, we only have two fighter groups, which are even in range for uh, providing escort. Everybody else is east. And boy, they're long. They're a long way out. Two hundred ninety-six. Like, can these guys even? Yeah, like these guys can meet up at the meetup point at Land's End and then leave. So that's not great. Uh, we'll have to build a delay in to try and extend the range of the escorts. But these fighters are all completely out of position to provide support. So the one hundred twenty-second squadron with the Spitfire HF nines. Kind of the only one that can do a decent job. So if we delay 15, they can meet up just before the before the target. 
where you see the S and the T here, this little green box that can escort through the target and then a big chunk of the, all the way home. I think that might actually be the better approach because the enemy fighters are not likely going to be able to get into position in time to intercept like out this way. They're probably going to start intercepting once we hit the French coast and maybe a little bit further in. So these guys can come in and hopefully get the first group of fighters off the enemy, off our friendly backs. Again, there's only 16 of them, but it might help. And then we can go ahead and, you know, add some, let's do some P-47s maybe on the way out, like once they're over the coat, over the channel, so they can just, if there are enemy fighters that are tailing them back over the channel, maybe they can sweep them, sweep them back. Jesus. The answer to that might actually be no. All right, so they can theoretically meet up here. So there may still be fighters following them back, so it's not a bad idea to send these 40 guys out here to just engage for like two minutes to get the Germans to turn around. Also, you can move you can move aircraft around. So you, you don't have to for the most part, but you can move aircraft around. I've done it a bit in the med. All right. Would it not be smart to have them come in over the water to punch out? I, the map doesn't go any further west, so I can't really... I could have them come over the water to the west here, but I'm... Mm, the thing is, if I have them come over water out to the west, they're still going to get detected and picked up by enemy fighters. It'll lengthen the amount of miles the planes have to fly. It'll lower the percentage of miles that are covered by fighters, and it will, I don't think, make the raid any more effective. So I'm going to thread the needle between the breast area and the breast port and just go straight in. That'll be the air way to give me the most fighter cover possible. Also, we probably shouldn't set these guys to 300 feet. Uh, we have a bunch of raids going in on the coast at around 9, so we're going to have this be a more of an afternoon strike. I think there's a, f a fairly high probability they won't even see the target. I'll tell you why in a minute. Additionally, because this is not a priority target and destroying it, in my opinion, is not as valuable... I'm going to go ahead and set the altitude a bit higher. I've been doing most of my raids at around 18 to 20,000 feet. You're much more accurate at that altitude, but you're also much more vulnerable to flak, of which I believe Brest has a lot. Uh, it also influences how well enemy fighters can, you know, perform against you, as well as your own fighters. So I'm actually going to set these guys up to 25,000 feet, which was not an unheard of altitude for the B-17 to operate at. I believe most B-17 raids took place between 23,000 and 30,000 feet. So 25,000 isn't an outrageous amount, but it's not me, you know, being Curtis LeMay in the Pacific and say, go in at 15,000 so you can get more accurate. Um, I'll just take the, I'll take the, the hit for being a little bit higher up. I'm also taking that risk because the weather does not look good today. Uh, let me see how to get this to show back up. But uh, the weather in West, oh, jeez, the weather in Western Europe, you can see here 53% cloud cover over France, basically over this region. So it is probably going to be socked in. We may not see the target. I don't even know if my aircraft, I don't think my aircraft have radar bombing yet. So they probably won't even drop their bombs on the target. Um, so, you know, that's the other thing here. Uh, it's a it's a terrible day to bomb the pens in Western Europe. So, of course, High Command says let's do it based on the weather report being terrible. And, uh, you know, we'll have to we'll have to do our best, right? I also don't know if the game... Yeah, we did. We adjusted that. So you can see we adjusted the raid to take place at 12. It's going to take place at 12 o'clock. So it is later in the day. Most of our port raids are going to hit around 10. They, they take off and meet up at 9, and they're going to hit around 10. So in I don't think any of my, my port raids are going to pull enemy fighters away. Maybe the fighters at Cherbourg don't scramble west, but they may be too far out of position to do that anyway. So we'll see. I don't know if that'll make it any more likely to hit or not, but um, that's that's kind of the situation there. Cloud covers at 53% overcast from 6,000 to 11,300 feet. Okay, so we're going to bomb Berlin, right? Well, because I'm not going to get any industrial points from the B-17s and my port targets today, we're also going to make it a precision target on uh, a German power plant here. There's a large power plant, the Berlin RMAL Kraftwerke power plant. Capacity of 13, which is very large. The largest U-boat factory for point and reference capacity is 16. So these are, these are a very large power plant, basically in the heart of Berlin. So you can see it's right here. It's inside this green circle. This green circle means anything that you hit inside this green circle 
is considered urban damage and will affect the terror score. So this is a scenario where we can actually bomb this target and any of the damage that occurs from this target will be counted toward our terror score. So we're going to go ahead and bomb this. Now what I will say is this is another situation where not having our radar beam is going to influence accuracy, right? Visual bombing is what's going to happen over Berlin. And so trying to hit a precision target over Berlin without radar guidance, you're probably not going to do a ton of damage to the power plant. Like, yes, if we had the radar beams, we might. We don't have the radar beams. So now our bombing, it's at nighttime. It's probably going to be worse. But it is what it is. We also benefit from the fact that the moon set is uh, 2014. So it'll be after the moon sets. There will be no moon in the sky for us when our bombing raid comes in. Yes, there's a, there's a port on the, the River Spray, I believe, uh, in Berlin. So keep, keep, keep in mind, it's not just like big ports along the coast. It's also river barges and things like that. It, it still influences how things get moved around. There's also a port at Potsdam and Holzorn. Uh, again, another river port. I believe there's port. There's additional ports further inland too, on major rivers. Like if the Danube is here, I'm sure there's some ports on the Danube. Let's Hitler. Let's Hitler. Uh, I don't know if the game goes far. Oh, it does go to Bucharest. So I'm assuming there's some ports further east. But yeah. Budapest has a port. Again, any city on a river usually has a port. Okay. Um, yeah, so we do have... So the, the, B, the B24 is in, in the game, um, and we do have B24s we could outfit. You know what's funny is, despite the fact that the B24 had a longer range and a heavier payload, Doolittle apparently did not like it. And toward the end of the war, Doolittle was trying to replace all B-17 B-24s with B-17s. Or all all 8th Air Force B-17s. All 8th Air Force B-24s with B-17s is what Doolittle was trying to do. I believe that's where I, I read that somewhere. All right, so let's go ahead and plan our target. Primary target. Ryan, or RM Kraftwerken. Let's zoom out here. I don't want to fly across all of the heart of Germany just on a straight shot. That seems dumb. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, planful routing. The inbound route, let's occur through here. We'll hit the gap between the airfield at Alkmark and the radar, fi uh, radar field just south, just north of Amsterdam. We'll cruise across the heart of Germany, largely avoiding urban centers, going over, well, there's one power plant here, or weapons factory that probably has flak. So inbound to divert north toward... Uh, Wittenberg? No, actually, that's too far north. I don't like going over airfields, though, either, because they also have flak. All right, we'll divert south. Inbound three will be this way, so it'll cut through this largely open gap between anything toward Wittenberg and then our initial point will be uh there's not going to be any way to avoid the main the flag the heavy flag through Berlin here so I think maybe we just make a straight shot in we're going to have to go over multiple heavy flag fields Um, the exit point, I guess we can try and get out away from the flak this way, move to the northeast. Outbound one, we'll just follow the same route we came in. Why does it do that to me? All right. So, this is a long raid. Uh, we are going to go ahead and pick our lead unit. We're going to want to pick a unit that has the most experience. What is late night strike? Like, what is that? Um, we're going to want a Pathfinder group. 
I mean, we can do mosquitoes. My problem with mosquito pathfinders is the mosquitoes tend to race out well ahead of the rest of the bombers, and you end up not, like, they bomb, hover around for a while, and then they leave often before the bombers even show up. The other thing is we also need to make sure we have radar because we're going in at night, and while there shouldn't be too much cloud cover, I definitely want to make sure we've got some radar. So while the, oh, we don't have any nav radar, you can see there's no units with Oboe or G. That's because we're outside the range of Oboe and G. Um, but we can go in with a Lancaster 3 group that has H2S, which is still navigation radar. It's not bombing on a beam, but it is still navigation radar. And actually, the 617th Squadron here has the highest experience in all of the aircraft that can re reach it. So it's not technically a Pathfinder group, but it's an 84 experience. I would think, I don't know that, I haven't seen anything that says Pathfinder specifically get a bonus. So I think we're going to go in with the 117th Squadron, because the next best is a Lancaster 3 Pathfinder group with H2S that's at like 72 experience. So we'll do that. And then we're just going to pick additional bombing groups that are going to go in on this raid. So... Pretty much we want groups that have high experience. I'm not going to pick anyone whose morale is under 40. I'm going to try and pick fuller groups. If they don't have at least 10 bombers, we're not going to send them in. Uh, our, our bomber crews have suffered quite a bit of, of attrition over the last month or two weeks, really, since the game started. Um, so at, at this point, I don't know how much experience matters. It's more about morale. So let's get anybody with 10 bombers or more. It's a max effort tonight for the RAF. If we're going to go to Berlin and we're going to take the casualties that that's going to take, we're going to send everybody, right? Like, maybe not quite a max effort. If, you're, if your squadron is somewhat shot up, then you don't have to go. But if you can reach the tar if you can reach the target and you've got a decent number of aircraft to strike the target with, you're going. Which, by the looks of it, means everybody's going except for, like, one or two Sterling and Lancaster squadrons which got shot up on previous missions. The Bomber Command is actually in pretty good shape. Most of these groups are pretty well, like, they have a pretty good number of ready aircraft. We've been doing smaller raids the last few days since the last episode, so we've been doing mostly stuff in around the two to 300 aircraft amount, so it's allowed these guys to get their morale back up, and it's also allowed them to get their uh, planes back in good enough shape. So it's going to be a pretty damn big raid. It's not going to be a 1,000 bomber mission, but it is going to be 866 bombers that are going to be hitting Berlin tonight. So that is a good chunk. Now we are hitting the RMAL Kraftwerk power plant. However, the good thing is, usually when you bomb here, there's going to be sort of a, a an escalator effect or a reverse escalator effect, where as you hit here, the smoke, the debris, the confusion, you're going to see the bomb, you're going to see the city on fire, you're going to drop early. And so they're going to start off around this target if they come in on target and they spot the target. However, as they drop, more and more bombers are going to find their bombs drifting westward. And actually the reason I picked this target was the logic was they'll start around here and they'll drift west westward. Well, as you can see, other parts of the city have already taken quite a bit of damage. The last time we bombed, we, bom we bombed Rosenthal. Time We also bombed, I believe it was Tempelhof. Tempelhof, we got a nice concentration. You can see quite a bit of damage there. Rosenthal, not as much, but you kind of see a trail of damage moving west in that case. The uh, Tempelhof raid came in from the north, and so you see a trail of damage going south to north. In this case, this whole eastern portion of the city is largely undamaged. And so we're going to go ahead and bomb the factory here, and then our bombs will drift west into the in, into the civilian areas here and hit undamaged sections of Berlin to give us, hopefully, more terror points. At least that's that's the goal here. Um, I am going to go ahead and have these guys, they're going to hit their target at an hour before midnight. Let's go ahead and delay the launch by an hour. Also, probably not want to fly in at 5,000 feet. So, I'm going to, you know, we're going to be flying over a lot of flak, a lot of dangerous areas. We're going to bomb a little bit higher than we usually do. I don't know if all my bombers can fly at 22,000 feet. I feel like the max sterling altitude is like 21. So, let's review that. Did that, did that stick? Yeah, 21,000. 
Now, a lot of times I would go with multiple raids. I'd go with multiple paths. That's what we did last time we bombed Berlin two weeks ago or so. We had like 400 bombers coming from the north, 400 from the east, and like 200 from the, to the like south or something. In this case, because this whole chunk of the city is undamaged, just let them go. Even if they trail way off, they're going to trail into undamaged areas, so I'm fine with that. We'll just send one concentrated force. Now, let's take a look here. Time over target. 08, no, yeah, 018. So, remember that, guys. 018 in the chat. Um, let's go ahead and plan an intruder mission because we're going to need to give these guys every bit of protection we can. We'll follow the mission, so it'll follow the exact same route. We will pick a Halifax RCM group. We're going to do six of them. They're a little bit faster than the Lancaster, so they'll get over the target at 1345, right? We said 018, right? So let's go ahead and delay their takeoff a bit so that they're covering the front of the formation with jamming. So they'll hit at 018. We're also going to do a Night Intruder group. That's going to follow the same path. And this is usually what I do. I don't really know if this is the best tactic, but it's usually what I do. We're going to go ahead and do some... Well, actually, we don't have... We have we have bow fighters. Okay, so we do have some night fighters that can reach Berlin, but not a ton. Uh, they're not at 018 either. They're a little bit faster still. So we'll go ahead and delay these guys. We're going to have these guys come in a little bit behind the RCMs. I'm assuming if the enemy's going to hit me with fighters... They will probably not hit the front of the formation. They will hit, like, the following groups. So we'll have these guys hit the target area at 025. We'll have six bow fighters coming with the group there. They're all coming in at the same altitude. We could mix altitudes and whatnot. That's probably a better idea, but you're not seeing it. You're attacking on radar, so I don't know how important it is to be able to dive on the enemy. There's no moonlight either, so there's there's that too. And then what we'll do is I usually just let these raids trail out at 10 minutes per. So we'll send another group 10 minutes after that. We'll send six. So they're coming at 035. We'll send another night intruder mission after that. Follow. We'll send this, this group here another. We're just going to send all the bow fighters because they're the ones who can make it. So these are going to be smaller fighter groups. And at, again, at 10 minute intervals because... You know, the time over target is for the lead group. Remember, the British bomb in bomber streams. So they have groups all go in kind of in a train. They don't all hit at the same time, or they don't even try to hit all at the same time. Um, so keep that in mind. So again, follow. Again, there's a lot of clicking, a lot of kind of busy work, but it's just the way the game is. So you just you just deal with it. If it's this is the kind of game you're interested in, it's just, it is what it is. I haven't shown you as much of the, like, detailed raid planning, and I'm certainly not the best player out there for this. But it's what we're doing tonight. All right, we're almost done. Um, sunrise is until 6 o'clock, so we should be safe there. We are also going to do one more radar mission with these mosquito. No, actually, we'll save the mosquitoes for another target. We'll do Halif We'll do the Halifaxes again. Second group of jammers to come in about 30 minutes after the bombs are on target to try and jam for the rear portion of the formation just to give them a little bit of cover. Because, again, you're not just jamming for ground-based radar. You're also jamming for the enemy fighters that are going to be in the air attacking the uh, attacking the formation. So we'll have this entire Halifax jamming squadron going. So we'll do that. All right, show paths. So we've got that raid out there, and then we are going to try and divert the enemy fighters a little bit. So we're going to have a night intruder mission to Hamburg. They're going to fly a little bit further north, closer to Helio Hel Helgoland. Not going to be quite as careful with them, but they're going to come in here. Wellington RCMs, six of them. We're going to want their four of them. 
We're going to want them to try and be over the target around the same time as our bombers start hitting Hamburg so that they jam the enemy maybe a couple of minutes after. We're going to try and pull the German night fighters north to Hamburg because these guys are going to come in jamming as well. So hopefully in an ideal world, the Germans won't know which direction we're coming from. I don't know if the game models like ground spotters because the ground spotters would be able to tell, hey, there's a huge formation of fighter bombers over Munster. Hamburg, you're going to hear six engines, right, or 12 engines. But anyway, we're also going to do a night intruder mission over, we'll say, Frankfurt on Main to try and pull fighters south that direction. That'll be a little bit earlier, I guess. And we'll do a night intruder mission a little bit closer to the main path. Do Leipzig? We'll do Leipzig. Leipzig hasn't even been bombed yet. Seems like that's a nice big city that could be, you know, worth hitting. So we're trying to create these corridors of confusion and radar jamming between us and the actual main raid. All right, I'm going to jump ahead a few minutes, guys, into the actual replay for this turn. Um, I had like 10 more minutes of me planning some recon missions, but you don't need to see that. So let's just jump ahead to the actual replay after some of the early morning recon flights have started. All right, more P-39 strafing Kronton airfield, where I believe there is like 50 enemy, enemy fighters, a lot of F-190Fs. <laughs> I'm not a fat art thief. I'm just fat. Okay. I mean, I'm not Herman Goering fat. I do not believe I classify as fat. Just saying. Just saying. I'm I'm probably in the overweight, but not obese or fat. Whatever you call that as. Why are we talking about this? This is why I need to have a co a co streamer so so they can be like, shut the hell up. <laughs> I'm okay with that, Santos. If we're going to body shame anyone, I'm okay body shaming fascists. Goering would put him there. Kesselring would move him. That's probably true. Get you on the call, big guy. Uh, I don't even have a call going right now. Um, I have. A, <laughs> I like that. I have, a, I have a larger airframe than some. You know, so that's a, that's a nicer way to say it. All right, so we are up to, oh, no, heavy weather. Oh, no, heavy weather delayed the form up of some of our bomber groups because the weather was so bad, and we knew it would be bad. So third squadron going in on Dunkirk, unable to locate the target. Uh, the 245th squadron did locate the bombing of the port at Cherbourg. So let's take a look at the cloud cover right now. Yeah, Cherbourg's in this nice pocket of clear weather, but the other targets not so much anyway the typhoons are going to stream in i i basically sent the fighter bombers to a large extent after the uh after the coastal ports <laughs> this exchange will be immortalized on the youtube upload too bad chat isn't on the youtube upload yeah that's why if you're watching on youtube just join the streams they're a lot of fun just click that link click that link over to twitch come join me over here Thank you for the follow, move log. Also earlier, S Query, Pinball Panda, Great AG, Kings Fan, Angie, and that's as far as down the list as it goes. All right, so the one downside of bombing tactical bombing rights is your fighters tend to be like, "Hey, that looks like fun. I want to go strafe the target," which tends to not be the best option for them, but. So we lost some some aircraft to flak over the channel um, or near the French coast. Nothing too bad, I don't think. Boston's coming in on the Panzer Grenadier Troop, and I don't see any German aircraft yet. Have they not scrambled anyone? Granted, most of our raids so far are hitting in the southern tip of Italy where they don't really have a lot of active airfields, but I'm kind of surprised. They usually scramble more boys up. Maybe the B-17 raid that's going in at the Hermann Goering Group is going to draw them all in. Which isn't great because I've only got 90 fighters and they're all P-38s. And the P-38s are not the best at uh, at dealing with enemy fighters at high altitude. 
107 Squadron going in, 84% obscured. Oh, flushing is apparently visible to the Typhoon's bombing there. Good job. Oh, that's the one where we sent in the Hurricanes and the Whirlways. I don't know anything about the Whirlaway other than it sucks in War in the Pacific. I think it was made in Australia. It's a bad aircraft, especially in 1943 over Europe. Tuskegee's, I, th I don't know if they would be here yet. I don't think they are. I believe I saw that they are in the game. I didn't. I quickly looked through the OOB to see where they were, and I couldn't find the 99th Fighter Group, which I believe is what they were. That being said, I did see comments in the Matrix forums that said they've got like 100 pilots that are replacement pilots for the group. Um, 100 named pilots that are replacement pilots in the group. Oh, poor Spitfire. You hit a balloon cable. Oh, another Spitfire hit a balloon cable. Boys. So I, I think if... If they have replacement pilots in the pool, according to the form anyway, they're probably in the game somewhere. Um, they used some whirlways in in combat, I believe, but I thought it was mainly in the Pacific. I know they were primarily a trainer, but I do believe they did get used somewhat. B-26 is bombing the Battle Langia Railway. That's definitely not how you pronounce that. Looks like we had our first air-to-air -air kill, by the way. Saw so 109 got shot down by a P-38. P-38 was damaged, so that's a better exchange than I usually see. You can see, ooh, you got the uh, the Italian symbol there with the three little, I don't know, three daggers, whatever the hell they are. Why are you diving to hit the target? Don't do that. You're going to be out of position when the enemy fighters show up. So stupid. Our medium bombers are coming in at 15,000 feet, and these dumbass fighter pilots think, let's go strafe some artillery. You know, because when the enemy fighters do show up, you're going to be at 10,000 feet and they're going to dive in on you at like 400 miles an hour. <sighs> Idiots. P-40 crashes on landing. Well, the pilot wasn't hurt, though. All right, so the B-25s drop their bombs and are on the way out. The Germans are pursuing them. 8-109s bouncing P-38 lightnings. Lightning damaged. Mustang 1 crashes. Pilot wounded. Typhoon is destroyed. Pilot wounded. Anytime it doesn't say pilot killed, that's a win to me. More 109s bouncing P-38s. At least that one was only damaged. Oh, these are the P-38s escorting the B-26 Marauder group. Usually the Marauder is fast enough to avoid damage, but obviously the enemy got in amongst them, so... Hopefully the lightnings do their damn job. Bouncing basically means the enemy's coming in between four to 5,000 feet above you. So that means they're attacking at a significant speed advantage. Attacking means they are coming in at roughly the same altitude, and so they don't get a, a diving advantage. Ooh, the Polish flag. Saw a brief glimpse of a Polish flag over England. I was thinking like, oh, we'll just skip through all the fighting, you know, just look at the results afterwards. But I got a lot of comments from folks last when I suggested that last time. Who were like, no, I like watching it. Okay. Not necessarily the prettiest replay. But hey, if you're watching a Gary Grigsby game and you've been watching it for an hour almost, uh, you know, I guess I, guess I, I don't want to deny you the full Grigsby experience. Man, those F-190s and, and 109s just won't stop pursuing me. Just get off my back. Hey, P-38s actually attacked the enemy, of course, through the MC-202s. But some air-to-air -air kills are nice. You can see those losses are still worse for the enemy, but keep in mind, almost all of those enemy aircraft destroyed on the ground, almost all of our aircraft destroyed in the sky. So, major difference in losses. But if the P-38s are getting attacked, the bombers are not. And so I guess I'd rather... Would I rather lose... Would I rather lose... Fighters, fighter pilots, or bomber pilots? If we're playing War in the Pacific, I would say fighter or bomber pilots for sure. But in this campaign, I don't know. I guess probably bomber pilots are less valuable. I don't know. All right. Nice. Lieutenant Colonel William survived. If we didn't enjoy watching that, you wouldn't be watching streams of Gary Grigsby games. I suppose that's true, P. Warner. I suppose that's true. 
All right. Bunch of recon flights. I did some auto planning of recons, so some of the airfield recon the AI did. Ooh, it's nighttime. Look at how the map slowly fades to dark. I wonder if there's any good map mods for this game. Someone, I don't know. It's just my voice is just going. I'm not sure why. Here come our Polish inner... Okay. Well, there's a lot of interceptors coming out already. Bombs falling in the open area. You shit-ass pathfinders. Hey, you guys are dropping in, in an area. You like this style if it was... Uh... No, I know. I'm just curious if there's any good map mods. Like, War in the Pacific has a ton of map mods. I'm curious about this. Good to see you, someone. Dim the lights. In comes Bomber Harris. I didn't think these night planes in the med were American. I thought they were British, but it looks like most of these guys are Americans. Do the Americans fly night bombing raids in the med? I know a couple groups did fly with the British in Bomber Command when the Americans were struggling with the daylight raids. Um, Sterling 1 attacked by German night fighters. So the Germans are in on the main column. Doesn't look like the jamming has been particularly effective. I may have jacked up the schedule. Because we got those, like the main column is already halfway into Germany while the northern... Jammers are nowhere near it. Apparently some mosquitoes got way out ahead of the formation and are trying to bomb now. Some are hitting the Berlin area. What's the cloud cover look like? It should be pretty open, right? Uh, Berlin is clear-ish right now. All right, well, Ber the nice, the one nice thing about Berlin is it's such a goddamn huge target, they're probably going to hit something. Hey, those guys are hitting the power plant. Good job, boys. Nighttime bombing actually got bombs on target. But other of these groups are dropping at open area. Okay. Don't bomb open areas, guys. The weather is clear. Where are those Lancasters going? Where the hell are you guys? You're a little off target. All right, let's switch to the uh, city phase. You can see the red areas here are fires. Those Sterlings bombing well to the southeast. So these guys are bombing in the Berlin area. We should do a decent amount of damage, I would think. You've got a pretty nice concentration here. You know, some of the groups are dropping in open areas, quite a few of them, but hopefully we'll get four to 500 bombers on target in Berlin. It's not going to be as concentrated as Essen, but again, we don't have the radar bombing to support us, so. And a lot of these guys are bombing just northeast of Berlin. Mm. That was nice. Yeah, quite a bit of fires. Hopefully it does enough damage to turn these areas not just yellow, but totally bombed out. We'll see. But a nice concentration of fires here. You can see all that red next to each other. I think we are benefiting from the being a mostly clear night. There's a couple of isolated fires here in the northeast. I 
That might have been the first aircraft we just lost in an air-to-air -air engagement. Um, for the nighttime raids, anyway. Think Berlin bombing increases terror score more than a different city? No, extra, I do not. My understanding is one square mile of bombed-out city is worth 100 terror points or something like that. So it's all about the number of squares, and it's not about particular targets. That being said, Berlin is going to have a lot more square miles of targets, so there is that. The German fighters don't seem to have done a lot of damage yet, at least on the first part of the raid. They've only lost a handful of bombers so far. So I'm... I don't know, like, I thought the jammers got off at a bad time, but maybe the jammers within the formation are doing a good job. Yeah, I really like this. So this is way better than the squares. Now, the, the squares that we started the turn off give you more information. They show you, like, as the enemy's intercepting you, as the enemy radar detects you, there's different, like, color lines to the squares. So it does give you more intel about how the turn is going. But from a purely aesthetic viewing point of view, it's cool to see the different nationalities. You know, you got the Canadian bombers. We saw Polish fighters earlier in the day. Obviously, you got the British and the Americans as well. The Ger Even on the Axis side, you got the, the Germans and you've got the, the Italians. They've got two different icons. It's interesting, though, that the it looks like the raid's fire damage is spreading southwest rather than trailing back behind the formation, which is what I kind of expected to see. Those Sterlings got no clue where the hell they are. They're like in the middle of nowhere or north near the Baltic Sea and they're dropping bombs. All right, so the losses are increasing. Would you see Romanian or Hungarians? I don't know the answer to that. Depends if there's groups that are based out of Romania and Hung Hungary. Probably if you bomb Ploiesti, you might. There were some Romanian fighter groups there, right? So you'd probably see some of that. The this blue one here. Royal Australian Air Force. Outer blue, inner white. These guys are New Zealand with the light blue bullseye. All right, so enemy fighters are doing a better job attacking our bombers on the outward leg of the raid after we've dropped our bombs. So losses are ticking up. So far, we're still under 10 for the raid, which out of 800, that's a pretty healthy loss rate. Like I said, we bombed uh, Wilhelmshaven last night, and we didn't lose a single plane out of 200. Sterling destroyed by flak. Seems like the routes of our aircraft were largely effective. We didn't seem to lose too many aircraft to flak, which was nice. Helped that there was no moon. The fact that the moon was set definitely influenced that several damaged aircraft are crashing on landing but most of the pilots seem to be getting out okay so at least that's good I say that in the next two planes that crash are both killed next three X4. Bastards! Well, at least Kirkwood was only wounded. Robert F. Mead! Okay, Davidson killed. Killed. Okay. I think that's it. Let's take a look at how things went. For 800 bombers, it still didn't seem like we lost a disastrous percentage or anything like that. 
We did lose 57 aircraft. The enemy lost 50. Like 40 of the enemy aircraft were probably lost on the ground. Uh, hey, we got a nice little... These black boxes, these are bombed out sectors. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 or, 15 or 16 square miles of Berlin bombed out or whatever. Whatever the metric is. Uh, if we review the raid... 886 bombers flew. We lost 18 of them. So that's a loss rate of about 2%. That is not bad. That is not bad at all. Uh, the Germans lost one interceptor. Now, we didn't have any intel. We, you know, we haven't had a post-mission bomb damage assessment yet. So I don't. it doesn't say Berlin is damaged yet or the actual target is damaged yet. But uh, we'll have to take a look at that. Meanwhile, we lost four bombers on the raid on Flushing out of 180. That's not bad. None of the 160 that went to Brest, none of the B-17s that went to Brest were lost. Milk run, boys. Milk run. Good job, B-17s. Nice experience gained. Probably helped their morale. No bombers lost flying at 27,000 feet. Does say it's 71 damage. I don't know how good that is. I don't I don't know if I did a post damage, post raid recon flight or not. But 71%, that's good enough for it to be totally red and to be considered shut down. So hopefully the fact that we shut down an entirely one of the pens, which realistically, I don't think we actually destroyed the pens, but at least according to high command, it's it's out of action. Um Anything else worth mentioning? Any other places a lot of bombers were lost? So the 4 out of 126 going to Cherbourg, 4 out of 180 going to Flushing. Both those ports totally destroyed. 3 out of the 127 that hit the 26 Panzer. 2 out of the 62 bombers that hit Battle of uh, Rail Yard. I think those were 17. Maybe those were 26s. One of the 118 B-17s that hit the Hermann Goering division. Five enemy interceptors were lost there. What was the worst interceptor day? Seven fighters intercepting at Batapalia, and then five of the troop in at the Hermann Goering. Okay. So overall, I'd say that was not too bad from a losses point of view. About, I mean, I don't, actually, I guess the other question is, where did our, where did our losses all come from? Five fighters over Vibo, five over Hermann Goering, four over Flushing, like... We lost 50 aircraft, but it didn't feel too bad. Like, none of these numbers are scary. Uh, if we go to aircraft losses, we lost two B-17s. Those were in the med. Three B-25s. Two Kitty Hawks, two Warhawks, nine P-38 Lightnings. So we did lose a higher number of those. Four Spitfire 5s, five Spitfire 5Cs. Five Two Spitfire Eights, one Hurricane, two Warways, five Typhoons, which was like out of six hundred or whatever that were flying for maybe three hundred. Two Lancaster threes, two Lancaster ones, one Halifax five, six Sterling threes, six Sterling ones. I think the Sterlings are about to be withdrawn from service, or they should be. The enemy lost twelve F one nineties, twelve two oh fives, twenty two one oh nine G sixes, most of those on the ground, but that's still a good percentage for them to lose. We flew 4,021 sorties. The enemy flew 1,800. Pretty even aircraft losses. Pilot losses, probably less so. You can see the enemy only lost four KIAs. We lost 33 plus 17 or 23 prisoners. So we lost 56 pilots total. Most of those MIA are probably prisoners. Enemy strategic bombing points dropped by about th about 20. They were at like 900-something. I thought it was like 910, 920. Dropped back under, under 900, 892 because the B-17s were not hitting anything meaningful. I tried to make up for that with some of those port strikes, but port strikes aren't industrial either, so a day for the enemy to repair their targets. But with that being said, that's going to do it for today's episode of Bombing the Reich. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Sorry for losing my voice in the middle of this thing. 
And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.